Yo, it's Hefty Hall HQ, rolling with the crew, moving those big loads, yeah, you know how we do, we got the ribs, the power of the mic, from dawn to dusk, we own the night, oversized loads, ain't nothing but a thing, got the trailer stretched out, feel the metal sing, Trucks. Welcome back to Heavy All HQ. Uh, we're going to roll in the shop today, there's some people asking me about the repair process on the Y-beams for the suspension, so let's go take a look and see what they're doing. We got a Y-beam job in the shop right now, and let's go see how that process looks. We got Mike right here, Nathan over here. This is a 60 ton modular Fontaine low boy. And then you can see on the Y-beams where I recommend inspecting it, on your three axles, that front axle is the one that has a Y-beam suspension, which is a beam that looks like this. You can see right here at the top, we'll start to get either a little crow's feet here or here. And then a lot of times it'll get bad enough where it goes down into the webbing. You can see it started from the top, this beam is upside down and it rips all the way into the webbing. Right here is the new Y-beam. And they're made a little stronger. The axle will sit right here. Nathan's over here right now. And he's cutting and cleaning up the axle where we can put that Y-beam back in there. And on this side, what we've done is push the bushing out. So we push the little rubber piece out right here. And then we kind of cut through it so we can get the whole sleeve cut out. You can see just right here, the difference between those two metals. Sometimes it's really hard to push those out. And then I've got to run over to the other side of the shop. We're looking at why is the chains breaking on this other trailer. So stand by one second. We're going to go take a look at this. All right, so we got the trailer in. We got the, we just dropped the last axle. So all three axles are on the ground. And we're trying to see why is it overextending the bags. They have a limiting chain down in here and they keep breaking. And we're thinking possibly that it is from overextending the bags. Those airbags are very strong and they will pop the chains loose. I guess let me hop on in the inside there, right? So the front axle's not breaking. Okay, well that was fun. So we've looked at the whole trailer and we kind of just looked and see what it is. And basically, yeah, if them chains are breaking, then it's either being operated improperly or going too high in a ditch, too low in a ditch. We had the trailer we had the trailer jacked all the way up in the front because uh, one of the lights had come unplugged. It looked like somebody had pulled on it a little hard. But anyways, so this one was tight. Now it's loose. If you overfill these bags too much, these limits and chains will pop, which is indicative that something's been overfilled too much. No good, man. No good. All right, well, we'll get it back repaired and then try to teach the operators how to kind of how to kind of take care of it and limit the and limit the amount that you're overfilling the bag, limit the amount that you're going uphill at a weird angle or in a ditch, basically. But that's what these trailers are for. They go off road a lot. And so then let's swing back over here and take a look at these Y beam suspensions. It's gonna come with all this stuff. New U bolts. We'll probably go ahead and swap out the shocks over here. Let me flip you around and I'll show you the alignment collars and all. This is an eccentric alignment collar, so you can see that hole is offset from the center with that little square shape right there so it can rotate the axle forward or back. What that will allow you to do, because everybody's always asking me. All right, I'll circle back to it. All right, sorry, we got interrupted by a call. Um, all right, so here's the kingpin under the neck. On the kingpin, that is where you hook your truck to. That's where the whole trailer pivots off of. So what we'll do is we will drop a plumb bob and make a plumb line, a plumb line, a square line straight down to the ground. And then say right here at this point on the ground, we'll put a tape measure. We actually have a thing called a pogo stick that holds the line there and then you can pivot a tape measure, a hundred foot tape off of it. From there, we'll scramble around to the far back. 
and yeah, Mike's over there grinding out and cleaning out that other bushing. So let's say this axle is right here. Say it was 40 feet to the first axle, then it'll be 40 feet to the other side of the first axle around to the back. That means that we're square to the kingpin. And then after you're square to the kingpin on your front axle, call it 40 feet on either side of that front axle. We'll measure from the center of the front axle to the second axle, whether it's 54 and a half or 60 inches. And then same thing from the second axle all the way back to the third axle. And that'll put you in alignment. There's other stuff that can go into it, but for a trailer, that's the majority of what we're looking at on aligning this axle back up after we get the Y-beams in. And then while we're at it, this is actually another common repair. We've got Mike Hill over here. This is my buddy Mike. He's with Gulf State Transportation. Is it Gulf State Transportation? Gulf State, yeah, Transport. Gulf State Transport. And what he did is one of his rascally drivers done put a chain over here, snatched off the handle off of his push-pull valve. So as you can see, this is a five-port push-pull valve, and that'll help facilitate a dump or either an airlift on the third axle. And so we've grabbed a new push-pull valve, five port, and then we'll get that one back going, put the panel back on, and then Gulf States will be back on his way to making some, to making some big money out on the open road. All right, so Anthony's got all the zip ties on there. That'll help you identify and make sure you got this valve going back on, just like you had it come off. I don't know how many times I've seen someone not do the zip ties, and then guess what? Now you have a big guessing game of where all the hoses go to. So Anthony did a great job here, and he'll get that going where he can put this new valve on. So thank you so much to Mike for letting us do this little repair and showing us around. Now let's swing back over to these Y-beam bushings. The much anticipated, what everybody comes to the channel for is to watch these Y-beam bushings. Why is it so dark on my face? There we go. Oh, and then look at this. These are some Trail King components that we've ordered in to fix one of the fold and tail trailers. Or maybe a low boy. Stay tuned. We'll go back to that one next. All right, so Nathan here is going to take all these out of the package so we can show you what these Y beam bushings look like. They're heavy, ain't it? All right, and then those are the little plastic spacers. Here's the Y beam. It comes in this whole metal tubing. Mike's cleaning out the other side. We'll usually use what's called a dingleberry or a hone. They really call it that. It's really literally called a dingleberry. Oh, dingleberry. <laughs> That's what it's called. That's what it's called. Don't blame me. Blame whoever named it. But what it is is a very large hone and that'll clean out that hole. Just like you do on brakes. And you can kind of see the orientation of that back axle, the way the alignment collar is on. The same thing will go with that Y beam will come up and wrap around that beam. You have your pivot bolt right here. That bolt will go through the center of your pivot bushing. And then it has a unique head on it. That head will snap off at around 1,200 foot-pounds of torque, which is actually very hard to do. But until that snaps off, it is not to the proper torque. All right, and then the last piece is the alignment collar. The alignment collar will go right there. And then you can cam this whole bushing forward or back to help with that alignment that we went over earlier. So stay tuned for a bit. We'll get this thing looked at here in just a bit. And we'll get you an update on how the whole process went. I snuck back out. The guys are at lunch. Oh, wow, you look, you can see the Fontaine and the Landall signs behind me. We have little flags flying. Oh, and then we have another Landall one over here. Boop. But the guys are at lunch, so I snuck out. I was gonna show you while it's number one, more quiet, and number two, some of the progress that's gone on on the uh, Y-beam project, we'll call it. They're about to weld the new bushing in there. Again, that's the bushing. And we're gonna scramble around to the other side and look at the axle itself. 
Again, the old Y-beam's right here. You can see where it's split all the way up it. And that one is actually flipped over because you can see where the axle is supposed to be seated down in here. And my gimbal does not want to cooperate with me. The new Y-beam is placed in, tack welded, kind of dry fitted up there. Everything lined up, new U-bolts put in, and they'll do that on, on both sides. Tack weld the other side in. Then they'll put the new U-bolts in there. And then I was gonna show y'all the so-called dingleberry or hone. These are what the hones. Yeah, I'll show you where to get them. These little things, if y'all wanna make a lot of money, you should be in the business of selling hones. They are incredibly expensive for what they are. But that's what the old bushing looks like. You can see how tore up and damaged it is. It's just misshapen, splitting and all that. So they'll take the hone and they'll spin it around inside of that hole over there, clean it all out and then get it back up. There's some other little welding spots we need to finish welding where they had tore up the gusset on that front beam and a couple of others. So that was a fun project. We'll get it back together here shortly. We've got a couple other ones. What are we doing on Yancey? So it sounds like on the Yancey trailer, they got some issues going on with their remote control. This is the old Trail King folding tail trailer. So that whole tail will flip up and out and then lay down so you can drive a piece of equipment up onto this unit here. And then they have an interesting way they put their binders. They just store them right here. So they tuck the little hooks in the one triangle and then fold the handle up in the top, which is an interesting way to store it. And then you can see this I actually recommend a lot, putting a hammer plate in any of your high usage areas. The Apatong, we think about it for uh, traction, but if you're needing just strength, then you're gonna go back with steel. And then they have more binders up here. They have some grade 100 or either 120 stuff back in here. We've been liking working with Yancey. It's been quite a lot of fun. We got the railroad project almost finished up over here. And then we got that chain project done. Hopefully y'all follow our short videos too on YouTube because on YouTube shorts, sorry, the phone's going off like crazy today. Well, the phone rang so much that we end up back in the shop. I don't even know where we was going, but I found a progress update on these bushings. So I'm gonna flip you around so we can see them. It's pretty nice looking. We got Al over here. He's packing up boxes like a madman, knocking them out of the park. So we got all these boxes of harnesses going out to customers. We got the bushings in. They still gotta orientate them in the right way. So that smiley face has to be orientated with the frame. We can, he said we can mess around with them so you can see where they kind of slide in and out of this tube. It has a satisfying sound. So they'll get those lined up and put in there. Put in there nicely, the orientation of the smiley face will be right. And then Daniel's gonna go over here and weld these axles in place get the u-bolts on them we'll get the u-bolts on them get them welded in place we got the other bushing over here going in it's all cleaned up and then these jobs are not too bad they're actually a very popular job if your trailer is not too old somewhere like five years i can usually push it through the warranty process with hendrickson Hendrickson is a tremendous company. They, they stand behind their product and they saw that they were having some YBM issues and they have stood behind them. And so I can get those covered. Um, if they're older than that, then what we have to do is buy new beams. The beams are about 1,500 a piece. The bushings range around 500 a piece and then put the labor into it and you'll have your trailer back as good as new. What day is it? Today is Wednesday, May 28th. Oh yeah, we just got back from Memorial Day. And we're getting some messages here from Brent Scarborough Company. That's a cool big construction company near me. Matter of fact, I gotta give Al a purchase order number for them. So we can get all those, we can get all those uh, harnesses out to them. The neck to deck harnesses and all those. We stock a ton of harnesses. So stand by and I'll be right back. Peace sign? No peace sign?
Hi. It's Brandon. As my uh, trailer sales master. Well, life comes at you fast. I've got to go out of town. The axle's back in. Everything's getting lined up perfectly. And then I'll follow up with you guys in the next episode. Stay safe and happy travels. Yo, it's Hefty Hall HQ. Rolling with the crew, moving those big loads. Yeah, you know how we do. We got the ribs. The power of the mic. From dawn to dusk, we own the night. Oversized loads ain't nothing but a thing. Got the trailer stretched out, feel the metal sing. Trucks on the highway, flexing the muscle. Heavy Hall Nation, we hold.